Today we will jump into 3D workspace in Photoshop and we will create this interesting photo manipulation. So let's start. Hey guys, it's Nemanja Sekulic and welcome to another really fun episode. Today we will jump into 3D workspace in Photoshop and I will teach you how to import 3D models in Photoshop, how to texture them, how to add lights and shadows and eventually how to create this really interesting paper steam locomotive photo manipulation. So without further ado, let's jump straight into Photoshop and let's the fun begin. Alright guys, today we will use few different images to create our interesting photo manipulation and you can find all of those images and the 3D model in the description so you can download it and follow this tutorial along with me. Alright, and before I start doing it, I like to change my workspace from a current one to a 3D. So you can go to Windows Workspace and just change it to 3D or you can go here and just choose a 3D workspace. That's great. Now that uh, we did that, we can go to 3D tab and just press new 3D layer from file and then you can uh, find the location of your 3D file and just open it. But before we start, I, I just want to say that you can find a lot of interesting 3D models for free online and Photoshop can really nicely handle OBJ or 3DS files extensions. So uh, you can just download any kind of 3D model that it's available for free or you can of course pay for some 3D model and then you can create your own version of photo manipulation. For today's episode, I will use this uh, Steam Locomotive OBJ file that you can find it uh, uh, in the description and I will load it here into Photoshop. And Photoshop uh, sometimes uh, it will load it really fast, sometimes it will take some time depend of uh, your machine, the speed of uh, your computer and so on and so on. But uh, just be patient when you uh, open uh, OBJ. OBJ takes a little bit longer to load than 3DS files. Alright guys, now that we have our 3D model loaded in Photoshop, let me first show you a few different options. We have three different tabs on the right side, 3D tab, Layers and Channels tab. And Layers and Channels tab are basically the same Layers and Channels tab that you used to use it in Photoshop. And now Layers tab contains new layer that says Steam Locomotive and on it you have this uh, cube icon that means that this layer contains a 3D object in it, except that it's completely the same like basically normal layer. You can hide it, reveal it, you can change the opacity, you can uh, change the blending modes, you can add layer masks and so on and so on. All right, and let's go here to 3D tab. 3D tab has a lot of these options right here. And first thing that we will use is this camera, this car current view. You have a current view or and you have this default camera view. What is the difference between those two? Well, I will show you really quickly. When you're in camera view and go to this move uh, tool icon, then go up here and click in this orbiting icon. You can just move your 3D model around as ever you like. And when you go to default camera, click it, it will go back to this default starting view. So when you position your, uh, your current view, then you don't want to go to default camera because you will mess everything up. But except that those are basically the same. So in the current view, we want to change some properties. You have this property properties dialog box. If you don't see it in some case, go to the window and these properties, all right? And you want to choose this camera tab, not the coordinates tab, just camera tab. And you want to change this field of view. Field of view is basically a virtual lens. Uh, I shot this background with a 56 millimeter lens and I need to match this virtual lens with a regular camera lens. So I need to use 56 millimeter lens to match with this perspective right here. All right. And I will just leave it like so and never change it again. So now I can go and choose this orbiting option and then I can just move my camera. Okay. And uh, let me see, I can position my train something like so. Right, I can move it with this icon maybe in the middle of the book somewhere here. And I really like it maybe to tweak it a little bit more. I don't know. Let me see. For now, let's let's leave it like so. I really like it, but I want my train to be bigger. So if I use this camera icon and move it, 
I will make the terrain bigger, but I will change the field of view. You will see. Let's go to the camera. I will change the field of view. It's basically like you're using a zoom lens and zooming uh, your model. So I don't want to mess with that. To make our terrain bigger, I will go to this OBJ mesh. And this is basically our model here. And I will just double click to rename it to have better representation what this uh, 3D layer means. It's locomotive, all right? And this below it, it's material of uh, a locomotive. So now it's just a diffuse gray material, nothing special. So let's first go to locomotive layer and I can go here to this scale uh, 3D object option and I can just scale it up or down make it bigger or smaller without changing the camera. Now camera is intact. Or I can go here in the middle of this uh, axis and just choose this option to scale it. So I want to make it a little bit bigger, maybe like so. And then I will choose those arrows, the tips of those arrows to move the train a little bit. And maybe you notice that now the wheels are uh, becoming black. Why? Because they're uh, submerge into the shadow. So on the left side here, you have this top view, but you can change it. You can change it to right, left, and so on and so on. I will change it to right view. And if I zoom it, you can see that our uh, train, it's submerged below the virtual plane, right? And that's why the wheels are basically black. So we need to move the train a little bit up by using those um, uh, arrows all right and you can see that now it's in that plane now it's about that plane and you can just position it right and maybe i don't know if you you can notice but those wheels are now out of uh, that plane but back wheels are still in that plane we need to tilt the train a little bit and to tilt it or to rotate it we will use uh, those options right here or you can go just here click on this and rotate it. But I like to use those virtual uh, axes and just click and rotate it. If you want to rotate it more precise, you just need to press and hold the mouse button and go further away from the model, from that uh, center of uh, rotation and just, you can better change the angle and maybe something like so, it's not bad, let me see like so and then move it up then go to this tip here and just move it let me see something like so something like so all right and then we can make this smaller again because i will not need it for now and that's great right now that we have our locomotive position it properly we need to change the light on the locomotive so let's do it to change the light, just go here to infinite light one and just go and rotate the light position. And you need to match the light with the background. If you can see the shadow position here on the background, you can see that the main light, it's a little bit left and behind the train. So we will do the same with this. We can move it as we want. So I will put main light something like something like this not so uh, long shadows the shadows are a little bit shorter maybe maybe something like like so let me see like this and that's great so then we can go to the properties tab and we can change the softness of the shadow sometimes if you have really soft light you can go and make the shadows really soft but in this case the shadows are not so soft so we will use maybe eight percent let me see that's great so let's go to the scene here and let's see the shadows are looking nice and it's almost like those maybe maybe the shadows need to be a little bit uh, harder so let's go again to infinite light and this tab and maybe lower even more to seven or six percent and that's i think a little bit better so that's great right if you want to make shadow a little bit darker or brighter you can do that by going to environment tab and let me first explain a few things this ibl means that this is image based light 
And we will not cover this today, but uh, image-based light is basically a light that illuminates our object based on some image. And as you can see here, we have some default image-based light and it's basically a gray color with a few white dots. And this is the lights that illuminate this scene uh, beside the main infinite light that we uh, used here, right? This is basically something like an ambient light, all right? And we will not deal with that. We will just change uh, here the shadow opacity, okay? You can see this shadows, color of the shadow, you can change the color of the shadow too, and you can change the opacity. If we go all the way to 100% and then go from environment to scene, you can see that the shadow it's much darker, but we will not make the shadow so dark because this and this shadow it's not so dark. So we will go back to environment and maybe make shadow around 70 or so percent. Let me see. And let's go back to the scene. And I think this is okay. Maybe it's darker. Maybe not. We will see a little bit later. All right. Now that we cover all this, we need to change the train or the locomotive material. So to do that, we need to go back to a locomotive here material and we need to go back to diffuse. Today we will only deal with diffuse tab. We will not use bump. We'll go with the bump all the way to zero. We will not use shine. Maybe we will use a little bit of the shine. You will see later, but basically the paper doesn't have any shine. So we will go back to zero and to change the fuse material, just click on this icon here and you can use edit texture. You can uh, say new texture or replace texture or remove this one. So I will just edit the current texture. Actually, we don't have textures he here, just the color. If you want to change the color, you can go right here and change the color. See? And that's something how you can change the color of uh, and 3D objects. So we will not use that. We will go back here and say edit texture. And now the Photoshop will open the texture file document that it's currently empty and we will populate this with a new texture. So let's go and find uh, this open book texture because I will copy this texture and bring it right, let me see, right here. And I will paste it. And as you can see now, this is too big. So I will use Control Command T to transform this image to make it smaller. And I will use this right portion of that, right? Like so, maybe make it a little bit bigger and just tweak it. I want to populate this square with the text like so and I will press OK. And now if I go back to our document, you will see it will automatically load this texture to the train, but it's completely mess. Why? Well, because the texture it's a way bigger than the train. So we need to shrink the texture to make the texture smaller. How to do that? Of course, it's again very easy. Just go again to diffuse here, but this time go to edit UV properties. UV properties are basically coordinates that tells 3D program how to wrap the texture around the model. And we will stick with this definition for this episode, all right? You don't need really to worry too much about it for uh, this tutorial. And you just need to scale down uh, the U and the V or X and Y coordinate, or you need to tile it up. You can choose either of those. I will just tile it up maybe 55 by 55. Let me see. And let me see. That's really nice. You can see now you can really nicely see the text and let's move it. Yeah, I really like it. I will press OK. And then I will tweak the lights a little bit. Let's go to 3D layer here, let's go to environment and maybe you can change the brightness of, uh, of the ambient light of this image based light. I will just lower it a little bit down, maybe around 100 or so. Let's go to the scene. That's a little bit better. And we can go to infinite light and choose, maybe make it brighter or not. Let me see, we can do that maybe a little bit better with the levels later. So let's stick it around 100% and maybe again go to the environment and let me see, environment tab and just maybe make it a little bit brighter around 120 or so. Now let's go to the scene. 
that's not bad at all. I really like how, how this looks for now. Okay, the next step now it's to go and to make a tunnel for uh, this book. So we can hide this uh, steam locomotive layer because we already finished with uh, the position, the texture. It's really nice. So just hide it and create a new layer about the background layer. I will use the lasso tool, press L on the keyboard and I will just make some shape of a tunnel, maybe like this. And of course I can move it, reposition it like so. And I will fill this selection with a black color. If the black color is our foreground color, I will just press Alt or Option key with the backspace to fill it deselected. And then I can use and control command T, then right click and wrap it so I can move this tunnel a little bit how I like it, maybe like so. We will see if this is wide enough. I will press OK. Now let's bring the locomotive in and let's lower the opacity. Let me see, not of the tunnel, but of the locomotive. And let me see if this is wide enough. It is. Mm, not so, maybe to make it a little bit wider. So let's go here to the tunnel layer, make it just touch wider, like so. I don't want to be too wide, I just want a little bit more like this. Let's hide this and let's re reposition it like so in the middle of the book again. Tweak it a little bit, maybe like so, and I think it's okay. So let me see. That's really nice. Maybe I need this part to bring a little bit more up, like so. Maybe this part a little bit more up, but let me see. Press OK, and that's not bad at all. Now let's go to our next step and let's use the next image, this one where we can see the whole side of the book. I will again use the lasso tool and I will just select the portion of it like so, copy it and go back and paste it. So I will have the wall here of this tunnel. I will rename this tunnel, right? And this is the side, side that we can see. I will clip this side layer to tunnel layer by pressing Alt or Option key and just click between them. So now if I move it, I will see this uh, side of the book only inside the tunnel. That's really nice. And I need to tweak it. I need to press Control Command T, then uh, wrap it and make it rounder, right? Something like, like so. This book, it's really, this book is really, really, big fat book so we need to make to look like that and like we cut it cut a hole through it so just tweak it to to fit this a little bit better maybe like so and press ok and this is really really nice the next step is to find another image and it will be this one and I will just use a pen tool or you can use a lasso tool or anything that you want. And I will just cut this top portion, press control and enter or command and enter, copy it and just go back, paste it right here. I will rename this floor, right? And again, clip it to the layer down below. So it will affect only this layer. And I will again go to control command T, right click, warp and I will just reposition this here at the end of the tunnel, like so, maybe like this. Let me see here and here. And this part needs to be a little bit wider, like this. And let's zoom it. Let's first fix this corner here but it will not be visible. I like it. And now we have this really nice tunnel. Let's go and bring, bring back our locomotive. It's really, really nice. So the next step is to add a layer mask 
to a locomotive, all right? And then control or command click on the tunnel to load the selection of the tunnel because we don't want this part of the layer of the 3D layer to be visible. So now we need to invert the selection. How to invert the selection? Well, just press Shift Control I or Shift Command I on a Mac and just invert it. Then go to the locomotive mask, press B on the keyboard for brush, use a black brush, 100% opacity and harder brush, like so, and just erase the shadow and the trailer here of the locomotive, like so. And that's really nice. So let me see. It's already looking great. Right, the next step is to tweak some lights and shadows and to finalize this image. So let's do it. I will add a new curves adjustment layer just above the floor here. And I will clip it to affect only the layers down below. And I will make the floor darker, a little bit darker like so, but I will use a black brush 100% opacity and I will paint out the side here because I don't want this side to be so dark and maybe I will use 20% opacity and just paint out this side right here like so and this is nice. Alright, the next step is to dodge and burn this locomotive and if you're not familiar with dodging and burning you can find my tutorial about that right here so watch that to have a better impression about a better knowledge about dodging and burning. So I will go to locomotive layer and I will create two curves adjustment layer. One is for dodge, right? Another is for burn. And I will go with dodge and make it brighter, right? And clip it to affect only locomotive layer. And I will go with the burn and make it darker and of course clip it to affect only locomotive layer. Invert the masks with control command I like so, and now I'm ready to paint some darks and whites uh, spots here. So I will use really soft brush, hardener zero, and I will use maybe 10% opacity or even less, we will see. And I will start with the burning. I will use a white brush and make this inside part of the locomotive a little bit darker. I will use 5% opacity. And this part that is in the tunnel, I'll make it darker like so and maybe the wheels here a little bit darker like like so okay and now let me see let's go to a dodging and just make those parts here a little bit brighter okay like so maybe here here maybe and let me see before and after before and after I really like it maybe just to go to uh, dodge and lower this curve a touch that's really really nice we can add another shadow layer just below this uh, steam locomotive layer by holding control or command key and click on the new layer like so and let's rename it shadow and I will add some uh, contact shadow here just with the uh, 5 or 10 percent opacity like so just a little bit of the contact shadow even more where the wheels are and of course you can spend even more time adding this shadow but this is just quick process okay like so this tutorial is already long enough but I just want to show that you can do that and maybe make this part of the train of the shadows sorry even darker like so this is really nice right guys one more thing before we continue if we zoom here as you see those shadows are really jagged and the model it's a little bit jagged too so that's because we didn't render our 3D model. So to render 3D model, to have really nice and beautiful shadows, you need to go to first the 3D model layer here, and then you need to go to 3D and render 3D layer, and that's it. And then computer will automatically start uh, to render your 3D model, and it will take some time, it depends on the speed of your processor, of your computer, and so on and so on. 
it can be a really long time or sometimes it can be a little bit faster process but for this purpose for this situation i will not render it because i will not uh, zoom uh, anywhere to show those details i will just put this photo on facebook or instagram where you cannot see all those details so i'll press escape to cancel this uh, rendering and we will continue with the tutorial if i zoom it now you will see that everything starts to look some something really really bad that's because this is only the beginning of the rendering process but eventually it will be really really perfect right guys the next step is to merge everything together into one layer and to apply a final color correction at the top of it so for that you can use a camera row filter you can use a nikon rfx pro you can use a luminar anything that you want so for this i will use the luminar because i really love it and if you're not familiar with Illuminar, you can find my short review right about here. Okay, let's go and merge everything together with Shift Control Alt E or Shift Command Option E on a Mac and go to the filter. I will use Luminar. Again, you can use anything that you want. It's your own preference. Right, this is a Luminar and I will make it a little bit bigger like so. And I will go to categories and I will choose maybe street. And here, let me see. Let me see. I will use maybe this only yellow. That's really nice. I like it, but I will lower the amount, maybe like half of it, 50 or 51 percent. And then I will add a few filters. I will add this matte filter, matte look. All right. Let's go to that filter and boost the amount of it like so and maybe tone it tone it let me see just a touch like so and let's add a lot mapping so i will use some lots here let's choose maybe wooden right and let's wait a few seconds for luminar to load that a lot here okay that's really nice so we can choose the amount of this lot maybe i will lower it a little bit Add a little bit of the contrast and maybe add even more vignette to it like so and let me show you before and after before and after of course you can color correct it as ever you like let me see all the way up and just check some settings maybe maybe I want to make reds a little bit darker and that's it that that's it so I will press apply and it will load this version of image into photoshop okay it's loading and that's it so this is before this is after before and after and now i will duplicate it and go to camera roll filter camera roll filter and tweak some final things here maybe add a little bit more contrast and a little bit more clarity maybe vibrance a little bit maybe i will go here and add some dehaze and maybe even more vignette then i can go here to split toning and make this image a little bit more warmer like so and shadows a little bit more colder but something like this okay and i want to sharpen this a little bit more like so and let me see maybe like maybe like this and press ok and you will see this is before and after and this is before and after luminar and uh camera camera roll filter and that's it guys let me see one more time this is really really nice image i really like it let's unzoom it yeah this is really really nice all right guys that's it for today i really hope that you like this tutorial and that you learn something new out of it it was a little bit more complex tutorial and it was a little bit more longer, but I really hope that you enjoyed it because the 3D world opens really big door to creativity and new possibilities. So now it's up to you to practice, to experiment and to have fun. Go over these tutorials a few more times to get used to new workspace, to get used to 3D world and then you will really boost your creativity. Try with some other uh, 3D objects. You can download a lot of them uh, for free online 
and maybe create some completely different photo manipulation. If you have any questions regarding to this episode, please leave them in the comments below. I will be glad to answer them. If you want to support this channel to make it even bigger and better, you can do that on my Patreon page. The link is down there in the description. So guys, see you in the next fun episode. Bye bye.